Top Cat. State Parliament returned this week and the Top Cat, New South Wales Premier Mike Baird, has had plenty to talk about. Council amalgamations, potential changes to the GST, lockout laws. So much to discuss. Yeah. Welcome, Premier. Thank you so much, Amanda, Jonesy. Good Mike to see you. Mike Baird, it's great to see you. Did you get all your toothpaste and your toothbrush out of the little police phone box like Top Cat used to do? You know, sit there and he put his <laughs> I used to like on. Top Cat. I love Top Cat. Yeah. It was great. Felix the cat, not so much. Do you Felix remember Felix? No, no, not a Felix fan. No, they, no. You know, you'll laugh so much, your sides will ache. I want my money back because not once did I ever laugh. A little Jonesy watching Felix the cat never laughed once at Felix the cat. <laughs> now you want your money <laughs> back? Most unfunny cat in the history of cats. Oh, apart from Garfield. Let's not even go there. Now, Premier, when it's when we say here that the first week of Parliament, you're back in Parliament, what yep. do you do when you're not there? What do you Have you been on holidays all this time? <laughs> I only wish, Amanda. Um, no, obviously there's a whole range of things to do with you. Sort of out in the community, um, going to schools, hospitals, uh, obviously a whole range of uh, groups and organisations. But then, of course, there's uh, cabinet and policy and legislation. And there's a lot of work that, that goes to putting all those together. So certainly gainfully employed when Parliament's not on. But um, obviously it's good to be back in Parliament. And when it's on, is it every day? Uh, it's uh, three days, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I mean, You're working a, part-time? Uh, well, <laughs> that's you could describe it that way. I know, <laughs> I mean, I'm not but see, this is a hiding to nowhere because you would I get know. a lot of that. People go, <laughs> oh, we get a real job. It's like in this job, people say, I only work three hours a day. Yeah. That's probably true. <laughs> but, but with your job, it, it, it does take up a lot of time, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Look, it's, I mean, it's uh, demanding in, in many ways, but, I mean, many jobs are demanding. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, midwives, uh, often I tip my hat to them. I mean, they do this incredible job and it, it, invariably they have to work longer than their shift because of circumstances. Mm. And, look, every, everyone's putting in and certainly, hopefully, people will see that not only myself but uh, the whole government is, is working hard to try and make this state better. Yep. Is that one of your policies, to make sure babies are only born between nine and yeah. five? <laughs> Would help Keep your legs crossed, it? lady. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I, I just reflect on them because uh, I just uh, am amazed regularly. I mean, imagine imagine that context of being a midwife where mm. you go to work and you bring uh, new life um, mm. out. I mean, it's just incredible. It I, is, I and then you go amazing. home to your normal life and you're four hours late and you're yelling at your own children. It's an amazing <laughs> day they must have. You're quite right. And yeah. what about the lockout laws? How are they going? There seems to be a lot of toing and froing. We've got Dr. Gordian Fooley. I just like saying his name. He do very well. And he loves them because, you know, people aren't getting punched in the head as much. And but other people got, saying Sydney's dying because yeah, we're of a it. Nanny, a nanny city now. Yeah, and obviously there's two sides yeah, to this debate. And I think if you, if you go back... Uh, to the whole reason these laws is it wasn't just let's introduce some laws it was on the back of uh, significant community angst of what was happening i mean remember all those scenes of violence we were seeing and uh, that tragic loss of life that mm. just happened too regularly you know young men that they, the future was their own could have done anything and cut down in senseless acts yeah there was a call for for action and what's clear is that the laws that have come in have reduced violence um, so they have taken that away and they have kept people out of emergency departments and undoubtedly saved lives. But there's others that say, well, there's an impact on businesses, there's an impact on nightlife, and that's why we have a, an independent review now. Our High Court Justice, uh, former High Court Justice, is, is obviously considering this uh, and he's obviously used to leading evidence-based uh, inquiries and that's what he'll do. So he'll look at all of the impacts of the laws, listen to all of the, the facts and obviously make some recommendations. Do you ever go out to one in the morning? Oh. I know we're similar vintage, and I did it just recently, and I, I got to about one, and I said, I've just got to go home. So, so, so I'm just going to fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's it's obviously different at this stage in life than it might have been uh, mm. in earlier on in my life. But, uh, I mean, obviously there's times when you're out uh, later, and look, it's 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 a part of uh, everyone's life in some way. So I, I think there's there's not n no one wants to see the situation that there's no nightlife. It's of course. I mean, it's an important part of every global city, but... At the same time, I think it's important that our streets are safe. I mean, if it's not me, then it's it's my kids uh, heading out there and it's many families' kids heading out there. And I think there's a, a obviously a desire uh, to keep them as safe as possible. Mm. But, you know, you need, you need to balance all implications and that's what uh, the review will do. Can I ask you a question about uh, Auburn Council and Salim Mahaja? Would any of the goings on there have come to light if he hadn't had a big fancy wedding. And what alarms me about that is that uh, are these things going on at other councils and we'd never know? Well, I mean, it's hard to say, but, I mean, it's it's clear. I mean, there's a number of issues that 
uh, have been are being considered at Auburn Council, which is obviously why there's an administrator that's uh, been appointed. And look, I, I think it's a, an example of why we do need reform across the local government sector. And uh, certainly the onus is on all of us uh, to keep um, our public officials, m- myself included, to account, uh, understanding what our councillors are doing. Are they doing it in community interest or are they doing it in their interest? And that's obviously what the debate um, has been about in some of the examples we've seen. Uh, so we need we need to do more. I mean, it's just not acceptable, some of the behaviours we've seen and highlighted, but we're determined to reform local government, and that's that's what we're doing. It must be hard to be a clean skin, though, because you yourself had that thing where you did that U-turn in your car and the copper pulled you up and then realised it was you and then let you off, and then you had to dob yourself into the <laughs> cops. Citizens arrest of yourself. <laughs> So you just have to be Mr. Squeaky Clean. Did, did he have to bring that back up? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, you know, I, think I think you should get praise for that. It's not like you've Barry O'Farrell yourself. It's like you've actually you've gone and said, look, I want to pay the fine. I've, I've done wrong here. Yeah, but, my, my, my mates go past that spot and sort of pay attention and say, oh, this is, they, they've named enough. That they call spot. it the beardy. That's the beardy. <laughs> Do a beardy. I'm going to chuck a beardy. <laughs> I don't. I've stopped. I've you learned, stopped I've, chucking beardies? I've, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> I still think we should go back and look at your own wedding photos to make sure it wasn't over yeah. the top all those yeah. 29 years ago when it, you got it was, married. It was relatively modest. Yeah. I was very lucky. I remember you I, had I was st- punching well above my weight. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have a pseudo outlaw motorcycle gang in front of your giant cavalcade. Closed down a few no, streets. No, no. That was my father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, it's, it's always great to talk to you. You're doing a great job. You look great. I'm so do you, mate, yeah. Thank you. I well, wasn't, wasn't fishing for a compliment. I think you might have been fishing for a compliment. <laughs> well, is today one of the days that Parliament's sitting? Yeah, no, back into Parliament uh, this afternoon. So Time to Bundy on. Heading heading in there. Yeah, oh, Bundy, I'll, make, I'll go and... So this is before ours, so... Uh, okay. yeah, You'll obviously. be invoicing us for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe, no, obviously good good for democracy, so, so look forward to it. Maybe you should become a midwife as well. Imagine In that. In your spare time. Oh, I couldn't do that, but my hat's off to them that do. <laughs> Mike Baird, thank you. Pleasure.